front line. We're glad you guys are here. I hope you guys had an awesome Christmas. I personally cannot believe we are about to go into 2016. Um, I hope you guys have had a great day. Please stand and join us in worship.
Well, good evening. Good evening. Good to see everybody here. Glad to know and know that you have recovered and uh, Christmas didn't kill you. Uh, did, did anyone have a little bit of food coma, though? Honestly, I, I've got one, like three days right now of just food sitting right here. And uh, I, I need to get back out and walking right now. Somebody's <laughs> talking to somebody about um, doing some running tonight. It's time to exercise. Bring on the New Year's resolution. Uh, I just want to extend a warm welcome. My name is Josh Ramsey. I'm the associate pastor here. I know I've met a few of you already tonight who are brand new with us. And I want to say thank you so much for coming. Uh, in your bulletin, which I trust you got, inside that front flap is a Connect card that you can fill out just to let us know a little more about you and for us to uh, have a little more information on you. Did I say that already? For us to know more about you and you to know uh, more about us. So love for you to fill that out for us and drop it off in the back. And we actually have a gift for you tonight. Just a little thank you for coming tonight. So uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, if I haven't met you yet, we would love to meet you. So uh, myself or somebody that's working here, feel free to stop and say hello and introduce yourself. We'd love to know that you've come tonight and uh, meet you and we'll be seeking you out. So don't run away. We will find you. Okay. Um, one thing I have tonight just uh, uh, that should be in your bulletin too is, guys, in the room, gentlemen, men's retreat, January 15th to the 18th. I want to see you there. I'm going, first time I'm getting to go, uh, and I'm super pumped about it. Uh, we're going to have a great time in Link, Switzerland. I don't know if we have any skiers out there, but I was told this is the place to go. I've skied twice. Not sure if this is like uh, for a newbie or not, but I'm going to go and pray I don't break a leg. Uh, but I hear it's beautiful and uh, unreal, and so I'm so excited about uh, getting to go. But more importantly, there's just a time of spiritual renewal, just a time to get away, spend time with God, uh, get refreshed. Um, a lot of great speakers that are coming too for the night sessions. Our own Mike Walk, who's uh, pastor of the city church now, he'll be there too. So really excited about it. But hope you join us. We've got about 20 or more gathered just in our church that are signed up, and we should meet another 200 or so there uh, at the retreat. And so would love just to extend a warm invitation for you. I'd love to see you there and, and come um, join us. Uh, if you look around, I think we've got a few um, young ones in the audience with us tonight. Tonight is another family service, and we're so excited to have them there too. Uh, you, tonight we had a special coloring book as well which I'm afraid I saw more adults picking those up than the kids. Those are for the children, but you can color on them too. That's fine. Uh, we're glad to have the children with us tonight. Um, we're going to do a little something different. Tonight's going to be a little bit different service than, than usual. We're going to have a, uh, what we're calling a year in review, kind of like a testimony Sunday. We're going to spend some time just reflecting on 2015, uh, particularly through some lives uh, of folks that have been at Frontline who are going to share tonight with us just what God has done in their life here this year, 2015, uh, and really excited about it. It's been a great morning. It was uh, fantastic just to hear some testimonies. Uh, before we jump into their testimonies, I just want to remind you the importance of your story. Uh, what is a testimony? A testimony story of what God has done in our lives. It's, it's really God's story reflected through us. It's a story how God is working, using us and using circumstances and situation and how he's used us, uh, done things in our life and used us uh, for his kingdom. Uh, David talks about sharing his testimony, about how he really can't stop talking about his testimony in Psalms uh, 71, verses 15 through 18. This is what David says. My mouth will tell of your righteousness, of your salvation all day long. Though I know it, not its measure. Meaning, though I really, I, sometimes I can't get the depth of your work and your righteousness. But I want to speak about it. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, O sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteousness, yours alone. Since my youth, O God, you have taught me. And to this day, I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, O God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your, mighty, your might to all who are to come. David's saying, I can't stop talking about these things. I can't stop talking about God. Uh, the relationship I have with him, the, the love that he has for me and I have for him, I can't stop talking about it. His righteousness, his mighty deeds, he's worth 
me talking about all day long, he said. Uh, we probably could have testimonies in here and go all night long with the testimonies of this, in this room of what God has done. Uh, but we're all going to spend just an hour or so tonight uh, looking at some of that. Uh, how important are testimonies? Well, check out what Jesus tells um, a man that was healed from uh, demon possession <laughs> in Luke chapter 8, verse 39. Uh, Jesus arrives on the scene and a man who is possessed with demons and Jesus casts those demons out and this man is ready to follow Jesus anywhere. Rightfully so, right? Uh, he's ready to give his life. I'll follow you anywhere, Jesus. I'll follow you. And yet Jesus stops him and he says, wait a second, here's what I want you to do. Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Think about that for a second. Here is Jesus himself in his midst. This, this man gets healed of this demon possession that he was struggling with for years. And now he wants to follow Jesus. Great. That's amazing. And you would think, well, God, what else more important is there to do? And Jesus says, I'm going to put you on assignment. I don't need you to go with me. I need you to stay right here. And I need you to tell everyone you know. Go back to your home and tell them all that God has done for you. That's a pretty powerful statement coming out of Jesus' mouth. But the most important thing he wanted him to do at that moment was just tell his story to others. Our testimony is powerful. What God's done in our life is powerful. Do you know yours? What's your testimony? I used to have to make uh, the students, when I was a, a youth pastor, write out their story. Write out their story of God working in their life. I wanted them to know it. So that when somebody asked, they could give a reason for why they follow Jesus. They could know, ah, let me tell you what God's done in my life. This is why I have the hope that I have. Uh, crazy enough, actually, in Revelation 12, 11, it says uh, in the end times, and they overcame him, him being the devil. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not love their lives so much to shrink back from death. God had given them two powerful keys of victory over the enemy. And that was the blood of Jesus Christ, who died for all of us. And it's the power of his blood that forgives us of all of our sins. And we get to enter eternal life because of that, because of his sacrifice and raising from the dead. But secondly, look at that. Another way they overcame him was by the word of their testimony, by their story, by their story of what God has done in their life, by their story of him and what he has done and who he is that it kept the enemy at bay. That's pretty powerful right there. We need to know what God's done in our life, and we need to remember it. Well, I, I could continue and tell you about my story, but I particularly want you to meet uh, a girl that comes to uh, our church uh, since this summer, since July, and hear her testimony of what God has done in her life uh, this past year or so. So this is Cammie, and I'm going to let them roll the tape. Hi, my name is Cami. I was born and raised in Romania. I moved to Germany 13 years ago. I lived in Munich for 12 years and I moved here in the area one year ago. I was raised Catholic and we went almost every Sunday to church, but it wasn't what I really was looking for. It felt hollow and cold and distant. And um, when I went to college, I completely stepped away from the Catholic Church and faith and I spent over 10 years um, dabbling into the occult. The deeper I got into the occult, the more enlightened I believed I was becoming. And I got to the point where I, I really, really felt I had it all figured out, um, spiritually speaking. And um, then I started having horrible nightmares for an extended period of time. And the, the nightmares that I was having were no ordinary nightmares. They were really, really horrible, very realistic. There were evil entities that were attacking me and it was very scary. And um, so I started thinking, this makes no sense. Where are they coming from? And my first reaction was switching 
back into the witchcraft mode, protecting myself from negative attacks. And uh, they didn't stop. And um, only then I, I realized, wait a minute, I am protecting myself from demons. So they actually are demons. And that's when I realized if there are demons, then there is Satan. And if there's Satan, then there is God and there is Jesus. A few days later, I fell on my knees sobbing and I asked Jesus for forgiveness. I thanked him for dying on the cross for me and I asked him to come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Also, I started um, having the desire to read the Bible which I happened to have one given to me almost 10 years ago. And um, so I was, for a few months, I was reading my Bible and watching um, YouTube sermons. And uh, then I really needed to go to a church, but I didn't want to go to a Catholic church anyway, obviously. And I, um, I just Googled American church in the area. And I found Frontline, and the next Sunday I came. And the moment I walked in, Josh greeted me. Hey, how are you? Welcome. Isn't it a lovely day? It was just great. And it was Josh's first day here also. And I really felt welcomed. I felt I finally found home. I wanted to get baptized almost immediately after I got saved. I just didn't know where and how. And um, the next opportunity to get baptized here in Frontline was the November 15th, and I took it, and I got baptized, and it was a wonderful day. Based on your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in <laughs> Ever since I got saved, I just... I don't feel depressed anymore. I don't have suicidal thoughts anymore. I am. I have hope, and I, there is a purpose, and it's just it's the best thing. Like my life now is before I got saved, and the life that I have after I got saved. Man, come on! Isn't that good stuff? Uh, the power of God at work right there in her life. I love that. I love her story. Uh, but you know what? We, we don't have to have a story necessarily that uh, something like that necessarily that we identify, but, but just what has God done in our life? Uh, and are we at a place that we really love God so much we can't stop talking about him, that we know what he's done for us, that we believe that he really died on the cross for us, that he's given us everything? And does it get us to a point that we can't stop talking about it? I just wonder as we go through this next year, 2016, what God wants to do in our lives. Would you let him do that? Would you let him do things that he can transform your life in order that you can tell others how God's going to transform their life as well and how he can? Uh, This morning, I just want to spend just a second in prayer before we go into worship. And I do want to pray just right off the bat that if there's any of you in here that have come tonight and and you still don't know Jesus... You don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior. You've, you've come to church and you hear these testimonies. They sound amazing, but you're like, God, I do need that for myself. If I'm honest, I guess I've never really made you the Lord of my life. I just want to extend that invitation tonight to you, even right now, to say, God, I need you. So if you will, would you just bow your head and close your eyes and let's just go to the Lord and just give him tonight. And, and also, if you're at that point, just ask him into your life. Let's just do that right now. So, Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this night. I thank you for the testimonies of how you have worked in people's life. God, I thank you for Cammie's testimony. God, I thank you for how you saved her last year. God, brought her here, God, and she got baptized, and she loves you, and you have changed her life, God. God, if she can markably see a difference from her life before knowing you and her life now after knowing you. And God, some of us might even need that right now, God. God, some of us might need that tonight, Father God. If we're honest... We may have done the Christian thing or come to church, but but we've never really gotten to that point where we've surrendered and said, God, take my life. I choose to follow you. I need you. I need you to to clean me up and forgive me of my sins. And I want to follow you. So, Lord, if there's any uh, of those in here tonight, God, that need to make that decision, would you knock on their heart right now, God? God, would you prompt them, Jesus, just to pray, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, save me. 
Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Oh, God, fill me with your love and your hope. God, I want to follow you. So, Lord, if there's any in here to need to make that decision tonight, would you do business with them as we uh, continue in worship this evening? Lord, we ask these things in your name I pray. Amen. Please stand, join us in worship, and I just encourage you to make this song your prayer for this next upcoming year. Be 
praise you, that your grace abounds, Lord. You have never failed us. And you're not going to start now, Lord. We have no reason to doubt you. You are a good, good Father, Lord. We praise you for this year, this upcoming year, Lord. We pray that you would lead us where our trust is without borders, Lord. That we would be taken deeper. That our faith would be made stronger, Lord. That we would call upon your name. Lord, we pray that you would do something in our lives so big in 2016 that there is no denying you were involved. There is no denying that your hands were all over it because it would have failed without you. We want to do big things, Lord. We want to do big things for you. We pray that you would move in us, that we would step out in our faith, that our faith would be made stronger, Lord, because you are ours and we are yours, and we praise you for that, Father. We love you and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I love that song. I hope that's a continual prayer of your heart uh, as it is mine. God, help me to continue to go farther and deeper with you. Help me not to put borders around what I think you can do or what I say you should only do. But God, as 2016 comes around, help me again just reaffirm with you, Jesus, take me wherever you want to. Do with me whatever you want to. You know, he calls us to save us. He loves to save all of us and rescue us. But then he also calls us to follow him, right, for him to be the Lord of our life, uh, to, to take us wherever he leads us. So he's the Savior and he's the Lord. Uh, I'm excited to introduce a couple to you uh, that's come new to Frontline 2 in the last six months or so that's really just seeing God do some incredible things in their life as they've surrendered and made Jesus the Lord of every area of their life and their marriage and their finances, uh, uh, even in an anxiety issue. So I'm going to ask the Arnolds to come up and just share their testimony of the goodness of God in their life this past year. This is Jesse and Crystal Arnold. Jesse, I'll give you the pleasure of introducing your family. And, oh, sorry. Hot mic. Hot mic. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jesse, like Pastor Josh just said. This is my beautiful wife, Crystal. We've been coming to Frontline since July. And uh, wow, it's been amazing. Uh, we just PCS'd here back in June, so it took us about a month to find this place. Uh, just came off of a 15 month unaccompanied. It was really rough time in my life, really, depression was setting in. Uh, just not feeling it between me and the wife. And, um, well, I'm just happy that I was able to bring my whole family here. Like, all three of my children, they love this place. We've been able to make it our home. And uh, I just want to let Crystal tell you about how it's actually worked really well in our marriage. So, hi. Yeah, see, like he said, we just got a off a 15 month in a company mean we're separated he's at um he's in turkey i'm still in the states so uh, with the three kids um when we reunited uh, um back in may uh communication was broken down um there was a uh, isolation uh yelling um screaming um disconnect between us um I had some financial infidelity when he was gone. Um, we had a plan for um, what we were going to do with the money that was coming in, and uh, I chose to spend it uh, unwisely to fill the hole um, for him not being there and to gift the kids to kind of uh, uh, fill their void for not having their father there. Uh, so by the time we got to uh, Germany, um, we weren't really talking much. Um, we were more like uh, roommates than a husband and wife. Uh, so, and we both kind of had separate spiritual lives, too. We kind of like to include that um, because I was kind of praying on the side. He was praying on the side, but we never prayed together at all. Um, so we knew we had to get to church, and uh, I looked on Facebook and saw awesome reviews about Frontline. So uh, we came to Frontline in, in July. And uh, like I said, um, we were having issues. So the first Sunday that we came, we were really wrestling with God, uh, fighting with each other as we were entering the parking lot. And uh, we come through those doors, 
and we were greeted with nothing but warmth and love and you can just feel the Holy Spirit just bless the fellowship in this place and um, it was just amazing and then the Lord just put in our path one after another um, uh, Christian counseling with Scott that we just kind of we both knew we had to take advantage to find the tools and find out that what was missing was God we didn't put Christ in the center of our marriage um, so we started doing praying over one another, praying together, uh, daily devotionals, and it just, he's amazing. The Lord is amazing. He just so blessed us in our marriage that he took those problems that we thought we had and just kind of banished them away. Uh, forgiveness was the most important part, though. We had a lot of bitter, uh, bitter and resentment um, towards each other, and so... Uh, we, uh, we learned that we went to God first and asked, you know, lay upon our hearts, well, my heart, what I need to ask you for forgiveness first, Lord, so I can clear the communication lines between us. And then he said, you need to go to your husband, ask for forgiveness for, for the way you handled, well, God's money, um, God's money, and, uh, and just ask for forgiveness for him. And my husband actually has a testimony about forgiveness and how it's really helped our marriage and him personally. Yes, forgiveness. It, I can't speak anything better about it. Once I was able to bring forgiveness into our marriage, it was so much easier to be able to talk to each other. Just it's so much to fathom how much we were missing out on each other when we couldn't forgive each other for stupid things like not paying bills or spending too much money or you know, not paying attention to each other. It was, it was just amazing how after I was able to forgive my wife, I was able to forgive myself. And then I was just able to ask God to forgive me, and it just it freed me. At that point, I thought about every aspect of my life in forgiveness. I mean, you can be driving to work and forgive the guy who cuts you off, you know. But uh, for my entire life, I've been struggling with an illegitimate father who I never forgave for 20, 35 years almost. He left me and my mom before I was born. Uh, he didn't come into my life until after I was a teenager. He then wanted to be part of my life, and I never really forgave him for that. And I just, I put that up to the Lord, and he softened my heart, and he just, he told me I was forgiven for holding that resentment against him, and it, it opened up my ability to be able to talk to my dad now. I, I called him, and I was like, hey, dad, please just forgive me for holding so much resentment against you. I can't. I can't believe that I, I've lost 35 years of a relationship with my father that I could have had that entire time. But the Lord just, he helped that. And so I'm glad that would be able to work. Amen. I, I love that part of uh, their story. Uh, I love when he shares that this morning too. And just realizing how important forgiveness is. It's an amazing tool that God has given us. Uh, right? Bitterness and uh, hurt and pain shut down our heart. But God has given us a tool of forgiveness to bring freedom and healing. Uh, we all need forgiveness. We all need God's forgiveness, right? And I, what I love about God is He will forgive us for anything. He will forgive us for everything we've ever done. Uh, that enough alone is uh, good enough for me to shout hallelujah, right? Praise God that you have forgiven me for everything I've ever done. But then he does say, now I want you And that can get tricky, especially when we've had a lot of hurt and pain in our life, and we've had situations that, where people have really hurt us, and they don't deserve it. But God does say to forgive them. And it does. It's like a, a key that unlocks uh, things in our life and lets that, uh, the freedom come, open, or come out as healing comes. And we just say, surrender to the Lord and say, God, forgive me for holding that bitterness and 
I love to hear how he says too. I felt forgiveness for for myself and gave uh, forg- forgave myself too for holding that stuff on and, and the bitterness between the in the relationship and God's really restored it. But on top of that, Crystal, you've got a little testimony too about the women's retreat. Yeah. Um, so uh, the second Sunday we were here, um, up on the screen flashed about the women's retreat, and uh, my husband I think nudged me, or it was the Holy Spirit that kind of nudged me. And uh, I just had the calling that I needed to go. Uh, Again, we were only here. um, This is our second Sunday. I didn't really know anybody other than name, face. So I prayed a little bit and uh, felt that I needed to take this leap of faith. A little background. Um, Up to this point, uh, I had uh, severe social anxiety. Um, It kept me from really going outside the house. Uh, it really impacted our marriage. Um, I wouldn't want to go to um, his squadron functions. I wouldn't want to go onto base. I wouldn't want to go um, to church. Um, I wouldn't really want to interact with anybody because I had this anxiety that would just lock me inside my body, and I wanted to isolate myself as much as I could. So the con- this small well, shove of the Lord for me to go on this women's retreat really... Um, uh, was an awesome experience. So I followed God. I, I just surrendered to him. I said, all right, I'm going to follow you on this one because the way I've been doing it, my life kind of sucks. Um, so we went in, or I went in, to the women's retreat, really nervous, and uh, it turned out amazingly. Uh, Saturday night was very powerful. Uh, Christy, our, uh, Christina, our speaker, was talking about soaking in the Lord and listening to what the Lord had to say to you. And we really spent time worshiping, and then we kind of broke off into our own little um, areas to pray to the Lord. And uh, I was just seeking to the Lord, and I was just, like, lifting it up to him. I'm like, I can't deal with this anxiety anymore. It's impacting my marriage and my relationship. It's impacting how I mother my children. It's impacting my own relationships with other women, which I didn't have friends at the time. And I was just lifting it up to him. And that night, as we were going back to our rooms, I kind of started felt like this calm in my chest, and I went to bed. I woke up in the morning, and I literally heard the Lord say, you're free. I didn't really understand what what it meant right then, but I felt different as I woke up. Went down to breakfast, went to worship, worshiping, and I just kind of like, Lord, is, is this what I think it is? And he just said, you're worthy. You're free. And I no longer have anxiety. Mm, I, uh... <laughs> I know I, he healed me and he released me. I, I literally wanted to go home that, and tell my husband that I want to go. Let's go meet people. Let's go. You know, I want to call people. I want to get connected into the church. I had never felt like that before. It was like the prison doors um, to, my, to my, my, my body were just open. And I could just be free and not have any judgment and and rapid heartbeat as I always say because there's a lot of physiological things that would go on with my anxiety but yeah the Lord is awesome and he he loves you and he thinks everyone is worthy regardless of what you bring to the table Uh, nothing is too big for him I can just say that nothing is too big for him and so yeah it was pretty amazing oh and look for it we have another women's retreat coming up so save the date (laughs) will be in January whether you know somebody or not just take that leap of faith and it'll be awesome I promise you that amen thank you guys for sharing your story with us I love what God has done in their life Uh, but I noticed if you didn't notice they did take some steps right they did go get help They did say, let's go to a Christian counselor, which we have one here on staff uh, named Scott Noggle who who does that. And I know has some openings in in this winter. Um, So that's something you need to do. Uh, Do that. We've got a marriage retreat coming up in the end of uh, January. We have retreats like this that we put on. But all of them are just going to point you back to Jesus. It's just going to say, well, you need to give your life to Jesus and let him heal heal you. And, And we'll show you how to do that. And we'll try to help you do that. Uh, so really, he's the one that does the work. And I just, again, praise God for the work he's done in their life. And actually, what I want them to do is just pray over us. Uh, I'm going to ask Jesse just to pray for our marriages in, at Frontline here. And just God will continue to work in our marriages. Uh, and just for Crystal, just to pray. Maybe somebody came in here tonight with anxiety. And so I just want her just to pray that God would even uh, set you free from anxiety as well. So I'll turn this mic back over to you guys. Heavenly Father. Thank you for this beautiful and glorious day, Lord. I just thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak in front of all of these people, Lord. 
I just want them to understand that you are here for them and that they can reach out to you, Lord. Just please, Lord, soften their hearts, open their minds, and just allow you to fill them, Lord. Just fill them in their marriage. Allow you to be the center of their marriage, Lord. Allow you to be the center of their finances, Lord. And just open their hearts to forgiveness, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for allowing us to be here to, to just share your will with these people in the audience, Lord. And I just want to lift up anybody who does have anxiety or depression or anything that is holding them back from just reaching to you, Lord, and to having a relationship and, and just surrendering to you, Lord. And I just ask that you just place your 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 hands on anybody in here, Lord, that, that, that you just release them from their anxiety, release them from their pain, release them from their, their cages that they're held captive in, and just and just just let them know, Lord and Father, that you believe they are worthy, they are significant, that no problem is too big, that they can just surrender it to you and you will bless them more than they could even imagine, Lord. Thank you, for Heavenly Father, in your name, amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Wow. That's awesome. I love how God's working. I love what he's doing. Again, we had a bunch of people we could have asked to to speak today. God has just done a lot in the year of 2015. Uh, But I've got a couple other uh, videos I want to show you of some people that couldn't be here tonight. Um, But thankfully, we recorded their their stories of just how God has even healed some people in uh, in our midst in the last last year or so. And before I do that, Psalms 103, 1 through 5, David writes again, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my innermost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desire with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Uh, I particularly want to show you two videos of some people who actually experienced some some healing that God did in their life. And the first is Scott Noggle. I'm going to show this video. Hi, I'm Scott. Um, I have, for the last 22 years, uh, been struggling with a chronic back pain um, from herniated disc, bulging disc, and degenerative disc disorder. I've tried everything over the last 22 years, from chiropractics to steroid injections to lower lumbar to physical therapy. Nothing ever really seemed to work. I was attending a, an encounter weekend here at Frontline uh, in April, and during the closing uh, remarks of it, they began to have a prayer session for healing. And I wasn't really looking for healing in my back at the time. I was just enjoying the, the seminar and just praying along with the lady. And uh, as she was praying for healing uh, of the back, um, she began to say, you're going to start to feel the release of pain from your head down through your shoulders and in your back. And as she was praying that, I literally felt a uh, tingling sensation starting on the top of my head, rolling down through my shoulders. And as it would go from each shoulder, the pain was just dissipating and going away. And as it rolled down my back, the pain literally just vanished. And um, yeah, it's been eight months and I've had literally no back pain. I can exercise, I can uh, play with my kids, do yard work, uh, sleep normally, and have had literally no pain. So praise God. Wow. I love that. For me, when I see God do a work like that, it just makes him so much more real. Right? I'm just like, wow, God, you still are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Like, it was, it was amazing. I heard Scott's testimony when it happened, and I was just blown away. Uh, we actually have another one, too, though, of Jen Walk, Mike's uh, uh, wife, who's going to share about their little daughter that got healed. I'm Jen Walk. About three months ago, we requested prayer for our daughter, Emmeline. She's three years old, and she has been, since she was about 10 months old, she's been pulling her hair out. And last summer was given a diagnosis of trichotillomania, which is a, a psychiatric disorder um, where people pull their hair out. So um, this family came to us and asked that we would pray and fast for three days and then get a group to come together and pray for her healing. And 
Um, since that time, we did that on two separate occasions, actually, and um, prayed for her complete healing. And she has almost completely stopped. Her hair has grown in. Um, all the bulb spots are filling in, and she's got about that much hair coming out the back. And um, now it almost looks like a mullet. <laughs> it's great, but we're pleased. So uh, we saw her healing, and, and God is good, and we were also able to see him working um, in and through the lives of others around us, too, that um, had nothing to do with us or Emmeline, but he was at work through our situation and, and through our willingness to, to bring it to him and to pray for her healing. Oh, amen. Yay, God. One more I want to read to you from Kat Chapman, who had a PCS and wrote this in. She says, I began attending Frontline in November of 2013. I had fallen into a place that I did not know existed, where you feel hopeless, isolated, and desperate. On top of this, I visited the ER six different occasions for abdominal pain. The last time I was there, I appeared to be in so much pain that the nurses thought I was bleeding internally. However, a particular nurse, having seen me several times before, suggesting having my rheumatoid factor checked. The results were positive, so I was referred to a rheumatologist. This began another series of tests, facing fear of possibly being diagnosed with many things. But thankfully, in the end, I ended up being diagnosed with fibromyalgia, a disease which attacks our nervous system and causes one pain daily, the treatment for which is a medication containing serotonin, which in the end makes it so that you don't feel the pain. It worked, but the drug I was taking was antidepressant, so I quickly gained a lot of weight. At this point, I knew something had to give, and I began to pray for healing, all the while having no idea that women in the church were also praying for me. Then came the opportunity to attend the Frontline Women's Retreat. I knew I had to go to deal with some struggles I was having. During the prayer time on Saturday night, it was revealed that there was what was inhabiting me, inhibiting me was a spirit of oppression. Instead of allowing things in my life to bless me, I had allowed everything that happened to me to oppress and draw me away from God instead of to Him. I was I also presented my fibromyalgia, and they prayed for my healing. At this point, God physically moved my body. Human description won't speak to what happened. I knew it was God. I woke up Sunday without the pain I had for so many previous mornings. I felt resurrected and found true joy. I'm so thankful to all the great people at Frontline who helped me have this opportunity and were praying for me when I didn't even know it. I hope this testimony lets you know to never lose hope and always trust in the Lord. Cat Chapman. That's good stuff, isn't it? I don't know what your understanding is uh, of God's power and God's healing and God's working in his life, uh, in our life like that, in a, in a real tangible way. Uh, it's something as a believer growing up, I, I didn't know God still did those kind of things. I didn't know that he, he healed like that uh, until, uh, even though I'd heard several stories and, and many things and saw it in the Bible, but uh, it was about 2008 when my father took a trip down uh, the stairs falling down the stairs and broke his two uh, bottom uh, vertebrae. Uh, he was in pain for many months, Percocet, Valium, all these kind of things. They had him in a brace, and thankfully he was still mobile. Um, but he ended up in a church service like this, and uh, a guy just said, hey, can I pray for you? Well, nothing seemed to happen or anything, but the next morning he gets up and goes and continues his day, and he noticed about halfway through there's no pain. All the pain was gone. Uh, so much so he was shocked and he only took maybe aspirin once or twice for the whole other year that his, his back continued to heal. His back wasn't fully healed uh, completely, but all the pain had left and God had healed him. And that's when I was like, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, you did what? God did what? Oh, and it blew me away and began to change my perspective of God. And, uh, you know, I still don't know the rhyme or reason to uh, how or when or what's God going to do, but you know what? I leave that to him. Uh, I just choose to say God can, and sometimes he does and will, and I'm just going to pray for it all the time. But there's a, a guy named Paul that also had a situation in his life, and he prayed for it to go away three times, and it didn't happen, and this is what he said in Second Corinthians. God revealed to him a reason. He said, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient 
sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Can I tell you, that's a place I want to get to. I'm just going to be honest. I don't think I'm there yet. I don't think I'm there where I delight in insults and hardships and persecution. I've really got an understanding that I, I want to be a servant of Christ and do whatever he calls me to do. And if that were to come because I'm a Christian, so be it. But he had learned something about a relationship with God that even in his weakness, he met God and he became strong. And I'm, I'm asking God, I want to go deeper and understand that. I hope I'm not asking for pain and suffering, but I'm asking God, I want to know you like that, to have a hope like that as well. Uh, So again, I don't know how God works all those things, but I know he still does work and his power is still real and active. And honestly, can I just tell you right now, I'm a little nervous to do this, but I want to be so bold and just say, if you've come here tonight and you've got some pain in your body, could we pray for you? Uh, You know, I just have learned sometimes we have not because we ask not. And I'd rather just look like a fool and just try it than to be scared and not pray for anybody. Uh, you got to be careful. My wife has found out. We've prayed for for several people over the last four or five years now, especially for her the last year or so. And we've seen a few people get healed. We've seen some people not. But you know what? We have seen some, and now you can't take her anywhere. We were at Truly's the other night, and the waitress comes over and, hey, guys, I'll take your order. And she's like, hey, how are you? Oh, I've got this headache. It's been a long day. Can I pray for you? I mean, just, just jumps on right there, you know, and uh, it's happened many times. So, again, be careful if you're hanging out with my wife. You never know what you're going to get yourself into. But uh, with that, if it would be okay, if you, if you do feel some pain in your body, even tonight, on a scale of 1 to 10, and it kind of hurts, would you just stand? And let us pray for you. Is that okay? Can we just pray for you right now? Or maybe you know somebody and maybe you just want to stand in the gap for them. But we just, we just want to pray for you tonight and just say, God, okay, God, could you do something? Uh, that's awesome. So if you're around these people, just kind of as a show, I'm praying for you. We just kind of place a hand out towards them just saying, yes, God, we're just praying for you. So, Father God, I do just want to stop right now. God, and I want to boldly become into your throat room, God, and ask God, that you would heal these people in this room right now, Jesus. Jesus, I ask in your name that you would bring healing, God. Would you touch them, Jesus? God, would you help them physically to feel your presence and your healing power, God? And God, anything, God, that needs to be uh, lined up, God, or healed, God, or taken away, Jesus, we ask you, God, that you would do a work, even now, and even tonight, even right now, God. Holy Spirit, would you come and do the things that only you can do? Uh, So, Father, I do in somewhat fear and trembling, Put myself out there to say, yes, God, I'm asking you to do this, but also boldly, God, I know you can do it, God. God, the kingdom of God is not mere talk, it's also power. So, Father, would you bring healing, God, right now, Father? Yeah, God, and some people are right now, God. Uh, again, I'm going to take one more bold step. If you can feel something right now, if you feel like the pain level is going down at all, would you just slip up your hand just so I can see? Get out of here. Come on now. All right, so those of you who are standing, I see a couple of hands right now. Anybody else? Yes, God, more God. You can feel something just kind of right now. Awesome. Yes, Jesus. Come on, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, God. So, God, we give you glory for everything, God. And, God, I thank you that you have, you have perfect sovereignty and, and timing and everything, Jesus. But we thank you, God, for your work, God, in our life. And I pray, God, we would all be bold enough, Jesus, to go out. Lord, and tell others about you, Jesus, and even be bold enough to say, can I pray for you? So, God, we continue to do a work in our our midst, Lord Jesus. I ask all these things in your name I pray. Amen. We had a lady first service that's going to have surgery in a month, and she's got massive, massive migraines. And we prayed for her today. And uh, she said it was about a 10 this morning, and after uh, she was prayed for by some people sitting next to her, it had gone down to a 2 immediately. And I'm just saying... Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, You know, he could heal none of us. He could heal one of us, and that's enough. He's still worthy of of all praise and glory. Amen? Still worthy of it. Well, last thing I want to leave with you tonight, as we wrap up this year of 2015, our last year of 2015, next time I see you will be next year. Dad joke. Uh, 
All right. Went over like it does at my house. Okay. Uh, how many of you know the song, Come Thou Fount? Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Praise God, I'm not the worship singer. That was written by Robert Robinson in 1757, and we're still singing it today. Now, check this out. Robert was 22 years old when he wrote that song. What astounds me about that is this incredible song that has lasted centuries now. We still sing, and it wasn't written by a man who was uh, um, in his prime and, and a worship leader and uh, in his 60s reflecting on his life and writing these amazing things and he was a, uh, a professional composer. It was written by a 22-year-old that just reflecting on his relationship with the Lord penned those words that have lasted forever. But in these words, they have that one phrase that all of us scratch our head at a lot of times when he says, Here I raise my Ebenezer. What does, Ebe- what does Ebenezer Scrooge have to do with this song? <laughs> Here I raise my Ebenezer. Here by thy great help I have come. See, an Ebenezer is a, uh, from the Hebrew word, which I will not um, say tonight and totally destroy, but it means stone of help. And it was penned during a time in 1 Samuel seven twelve when God rescued Israel again from a great battle. And he helped them and he saved them. And Samuel said, Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shin. And he called its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So Samuel, what he did after this battle was over, is he built a little monument, a little stone reminder of what God had done. Think about that. That could have lasted, it's, it's rock, hundreds of years. And it was a, a moment and a point in place where every time they walked by it, they could remember what God had done for them. Uh, think about that when you're a parent. And you've got your five and six-year-old, and you're taking them wherever you're taking them in, in Israel at that moment. And you pass that one little monument, monument, and your kids are like, hey, Dad, what's that about? Ah, good question, son. Let me tell you about what God did for us that day. Let me remind you of the goodness of God, how he rescued us, how he saved us. Uh, This is my family's Ebenezer. We started this last year. My wife and I were in discussions just about all the good things God had done, but it's funny, the more we try to remember, the harder it is, (laughs) the more we forget. And God's done some amazing things in our life in the last couple of years, and we want to remember them. And so we decided we're going to have to be intentional about it, or at least we will forget. And so we started a little jar here where we write the things down, little, big, whatever, doesn't matter, uh, what we feel like God has done in our life. And this past year, we've filled up the jar so far. Uh, I hope in years to come, we'll have many jars like this. But this is our way of saying, God, we don't want to forget what you have done for us. I'm hoping in several years when Ella starts asking, what are all that paper in the box and She's looking around at it. We can stop and say, use it as a teaching tool to tell her how good God is. Well, let me tell you what he did in our life. I hope maybe one day, if it lasts that long, to pass it on to her as she goes to college. She'd say, honey, don't forget. Don't remember what God has done in our life and for our family. And so we've kind of started a little memento. I'm not suggesting you have to do that, but what would you say this week as you process 2015. What has God done for you this last year? I think it's important that we intentionally remember those things. Because remember, the word of our testimony is what we use to fight against the devil. And he's going to come at us. We'll have one victory in one minute. And guess what? It doesn't mean he stops coming at us. And he still comes. The enemy loves to steal, kill, and destroy. And he loves just to, to plague our mind with worry and fear and doubt. It was good, you know, oh, great. I remember how, God, you did that one thing. But now, ah, I can't remember. Uh, Well, I want to have something like this so my testimony, I can remember my testimony and throw it back in his face. No. No, that's not how this works. If God is for me, who can be against me? 
and I've got proof that God is for me. I've got personal proof and personal stories that my God is for me. Uh, I think it's important that, that we keep something like this or some kind of memory of what God has done for us. And so I would encourage you, uh, spend some time this week with your family or just yourself uh, personally. Find some time thinking and remembering what God has done for you in 2015. Uh, being that it is the year 2015, I've actually created a hashtag for this for all you hashtaggers. Love to hear your stories. Hey, has this been good hearing personal testimonies of some people? That's been good for you? Amen? Awesome. Well, we'd love to, to hear more of your testimonies as well. So if you are on Facebook or things like that and you just want to share your God story w- with us or with your friends and family, uh, and again, you're a hashtag, or just hashtag that, Frontline Testimonies, and that way we can all just click on the, that link and it'll keep a, a record of us, of all the things God's done for us in our little community to remind us that God is good. God's still on the throne. He's going to take care of us. And he's, what he's done for you, he'll do for, for me as well. He's no respecter of persons. He doesn't have a favorite club. He loves all of us the same. So I'd love to, to see, just have a Facebook filled uh, of testimonies. Uh, that's all I've got for tonight. Uh, we got one more worship song just to, to sing about how good our God is. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and invite the worship team on up. But I just want to pray for us. And maybe you need personal prayer tonight, and we're going to be here after service is over just to pray for you uh, specifically. Uh, Even if it's, hey, I'd like to keep praying uh, for some more healing. I'm up for that. I'll pray with you all night uh, if if we got to. Um, But anything it is. But as we pray, just spend a moment just saying, yeah, God, help me to remember what you've done for me this year. Help me not to forget all of your good deeds, all of your faithfulness. So let's just go to prayer right now, and then we'll end our time tonight in worship. So, Father God, I just stop again to say thank you. Oh, God, yeah, God, I thank you so much for who you are and what you've done. But I thank you that you have lavished your love on your people. God, I thank you for your great love. Jesus, you're enough. Really, you are enough. You, you coming and dying for us and taking the the punishment we deserve, God, that is enough. That's worthy of praise for the rest of our life. Even if you were to never do anything else again for us, God, that is enough. But God, thank you. That was just the beginning. That was just a start to say, this is how much I love you. God, and that you do just love your people. Father, would you help us not to forget? Would you help us to remember, God, the good things you've done for us? God, I pray for anybody in this room who still needs to to, to come to know you, God, or has some things they need to just put at the cross, Jesus. Lord, maybe an area of their life that they still feel trapped in or in bondage in. God, would you heal them tonight, God? Would you set them free tonight, God? Would you tell them, prompt their heart, maybe if it is, you need to forgive. Whatever it is, Lord, help us be willing to surrender and just come to you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this time, God. We thank you for the testimonies of these people and of the testimonies of your goodness. God, would you you get us excited about those things and help us to leave these four walls, God, and go tell others about how good our God is. Lord, we thank you for this night. We ask all these things, Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand and boldly worship with us. Water you turned in.